Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. I'm Ring Roo, hello, hello, hello. And folks, uh, we're taking a break from covering on the round robin stuff to kind of give you a little bit of a, what was it, the brawl over Brest, which happened this past weekend. Rang, um, on Brest West, what will you tell us about this tournament and who's, uh, who's fighting today? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have her Robert playing as Pantaler with Vanguard Income. And on the right-hand side, we have Spanish Vita playing as 3rd Armoured Division, U.S. We have a balance income. This is the Brest Rush Tournament, which, on said, happened last weekend. Short one-day single elimination tournament, pretty much playing on all the maps that have been added in the last update. So, yeah, just, just good old Ron V runs, and as we notice, it's, it's close combat. Yeah, super excited about that when I saw the map pop up this way. Now... Panzer Lair, 3rd US, these are definitely Western divisions that have been transplanted over here. How are they going to match up both against each other and on this kind of unique close combat setup? Oh, for definitely very heavily armoured division driven well, lots of armour. Her Robert going for more of an A-phase rush, which you can do now, reverse C2, due to how you can set your own income. But you got some pretty good A-phase units, you can get like A-phase Panzer 4s, Panzer 3s, Panthers of course. With Pandela, so maybe we'll see some heavy tank play from her, or maybe we from infantry play. Uh, it's not not the best thing for Pandela. For Spanish Savita, it's a nice close quarters map, so Sherman should do pretty decent stabilizers and all of that. And uh, yeah, off we go. And Spanish are taking a very defensive position, really. Most of his infantry have actually just been unloaded. Yeah, but you know what? I kind of like that, because I feel like on this kind of map, you need to make sure you can control the crossings. Mm hmm. And that central crossing right there is exceedingly important. Yep. So you lose that, and you lose the coordination between your northern and southern halves. Yep, yeah. He's just, yeah, just got very defensive position. Honestly, it does make sense here, because he's playing a balanced income versus a vanguard and A phase. So you would just kind of automatically put on a defensive duty at 50 point difference. Yo. Well, one thing he's got to do is be a little bit more aggressive, because you can see already it's 15-9. <laughs> yeah. Because these rinky-dink little uh, Pikaren squads are taking an awful lot of territory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty easy territory yeah, for her, Robert, with really not much issue on his end. Fair enough. Now, we are going to see, of course, a lot of flamethrower troops early. They're trying to take advantage of that Jeep mobility, um, both Jeep and Jeep, for that matter. But, uh, ooh, actually we see an edgelord play coming over here, slashing over the northern edge of that map. Which is probably a good idea when you think about it. There's very, very little German presence on that northern side. Yeah, it's a uh, Panzergren and an IG-18, so he should be able to push through and capture out for us. Like, close quarters, as armored rifles do pretty good, thanks to all their semi-automatic weaponry. The thing I think I'm a little bit surprised by is that there's very little recon being kind of developed from both sides we are going to see actually a very early panther d being brought into the south that's what you're talking about that heavily armored push mm -hmm. um but there's there's more than their share 57 mils and 76 mils are dotted around so i don't know how well that's necessarily going to go yeah bloody bloody six panel 57 millimeter at guns to be proper here are really good. The American ones not so much compared to the British as they don't have APCR cells, but at a uh, 12 rounds a minute, even if you're not penetrating the Panther, by God, you can get a lot of critical hits. You certainly can. Now, we are seeing a little bit of action happening up top list. The Germans have realized, oh, wait a second, we actually have uh, some enemies. And you'll see P 47s going to come in and strafe this IG 18 to death. Yeah. You'd be very surprised if he survives this. Yes, sir? Yeah, it's going to be very deadly. Strafe and run, yeah, and God, I, I really do like seeing he's rest in front of his ones again. I, I, I do, I do miss him from SD44. So it's just, it's just good seeing, you know, some American armor, some American firepower. Other than the, you know, Lend Lee stuff. Yeah, other than the Lend Lee stuff. The Russians do have an M3 Leo, and the Americans don't have that for obvious reasons. <laughs> Basically, that it was significantly <laughs> outdated by the time they got there. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, we are going to see that recon after all. Piper recon plane looking to get a little bit of eyes on the center part of the map. But it remains 1311. And while that northern push is going to go very well, at least until IG-18 gets up, uh, not sure I really like Spencer Wright's early position here. Yeah, that defensive opening definitely hurt him a little bit in terms of points. I mean, he is starting to lose his southern side a bit as her robot is pushing. And... 
And yeah. Yeah. It, honestly, to be fair, this is a pretty hard map to, to push on on both sides. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hills, there's a lot of forest. It can be really, really deadly. Especially in the middle for Spanish's side, trying to attack uh, Restridge. As you just got that firing line here, as you see, I got two IG-18s and a pack 40 on, mm -hmm. on, on top. Very true, and that's the thing that I've seen before. Like that, that rather meager opening has really kind of put them behind the eight ball in the center. Mm -hmm. um, now, track broken already on the Panther D, so that's really unfortunate. He did not even really get a chance to fight. He's actually probably get taken out pretty quickly here. I've got seventy six mil gun. Actually, holding fire now. So I think he's just trying to preserve APs here, ammunition maybe on that AT gun. We've got a second Panther being brought in. A nice ring of Panther D's are nice and cheap, but only 110 points, you can you can easily get quite a few of them. And there goes a rinky dinky little recon plane. Well, you know what? I mean, the bullies oh. try to take the lunch money first. They want to go after the guy who can fight back. Oh, right. And we're going to see actually up to the north, the lone P Grand squad does get taken out. And there's now a Panther D, a Flumen Verfa troop. And I thought it was going to be an IG 18, but I guess that got called off at the last second? Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess. It's a, it's a good kind of post here from Spanish uh, trying to take his northern area. It's a bit more infantry focused, so he should have a decent time in there. True, though even... I mean, the Flamin' Buffer Troops, only get, that's, a, that's a donation right there. Yeah. Uh, but by the same token, the heavy flamethrower being brought in from the Americans, uh, he's not going to have too much of a good time either. So I can't help but feel that maybe a strafing gun or two might be the word of the day here. As it is, though, more flaming flamethrowers, another peak run, another panther. So the north, I think, is going to be stabilized quite well. Yeah, geez, this is this is a lot of panthers. I mean, it's exactly what you want to do. Uh, your vanguard opening, just trying to get the most of the income early on. And these panthers are going to make short work of these seventy-five mil Shermans. If they see them. If they see them, it's an issue. And also, all the Spanishers' infantry, they have bazookas, and bazookas are pretty good at killing panthers. Yep, even though I have, I still have the same issue with bazookas that I did before. 100% um, right. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing finally at long last, uh, the peak run squad does get taken out. And I'm surprised that it, it only took a little single flamethrower troop to do it. Um, but regardless, I guess that kind of just goes to show you, you cannot live by k Gates alone. You have to sit down, fire, have a nice you know, base of fire before you move forward. Yeah, exactly. Let them MG42 do the talking. Meanwhile, that uh, half track is probably peeing himself as he realized, oh my god, it's not just infantry. <laughs> yeah, Panther just kind of made his acquaintance. And now the plane Oof. has to get to kill. Elsewise, though, other places in the map, no one's really kind of too concerned about this. And I completely understand. I think Herr Robert just wants to lay back and take his territory, and Spanish are right, uh, his, he's focused an awful lot in this northern side. Mm-hmm. You're going to get the armored rifles, like you said, there's got armored rifles that are slotting up and around, they're going to pick on that, that Panther D pretty quickly, and that's going to be brutal. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, it's going to the forest, so that's going to be, it's going to be a real sneaky player. I do like how spencer has got his Sherman up, into that northern middle area of the armored rifles, that's a pretty good spot. Panther is coming around the hill. And, yeah, he's going to make short work of the Shaman. I would tend to think so. Yeah. Desperately undergunned right there. There we go. Uh, and there was a radio command as well, so... Not the greatest loss, but there's still a pretty much a force multiplier that is no longer there. Yeah. Actually, we're seeing a couple of P4s now. It looks like Herr Robert did not invest in, inordinately inside those Panther Ds. He's bringing up some main battle tanks as... as well. Yeah, I think it was Panther D's with the regular cards, you get two to three per card roughly in A phase. I think like only one to two leader per card in A phase. So yeah, definitely a good idea to boast drop with some Panther forces. A little bit more plentiful. Very true. Now, looking down at the south just real quick, we have actually the commander being brought on in super, super early, or relatively early, I would say, in phase L well, in the battle overall. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always interests me to watch where officers get brought in. Do they kind of stick up in the middle? Do they stick them on the sides? 
Uh, and I, I guess further thought about it kind of needs to kind of go by the wayside. You see, armored rifles are pierced in the middle, and the Americans are no longer happy just being on their side of that little itty bitty stream. Yeah, he's starting to move them up through the forest, and that's going to be a pretty good position. He's probably not going to get all the way to the other side on top of the hill where the IG 18 are, because that's just too much of a hassle. But he can easily grab two, maybe three flags in the middle here if he continues continues just assault. True. Now I think the Panther D up to the north got picked off. Yep. Yeah. I think he definitely did. Yep. He got zooked. Interesting. By the way, we're seeing a couple of Bofors here and there, um, dotted about the map. Not going to be the greatest to be right on the front lines, but um, <laughs> hey, if that's if that's what works for you. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of a silly position with that north and both horse for so, but definitely made a good reason for because he doesn't like that Fokker Wolf flying around. True, but the Fokker Wolf, I think, um, I guess the P47 on a head to head. Really? That was an interesting decision. Um, otherwise, though, we are seeing anti tank guns are picking off and taking their pound of flesh here and there. Pretty much wherever you turn, so. Got to be careful. I'd like to see some more artillery out of both sides, actually. Or any artillery, to be fair. Yeah, both sides got really good mortar half-tracks. And this is a map that really uh, promotes mortar half-track play. So CQC, you can hide in forests. It's just just see mortar half-tracks. Only artillery you need most of the time. Now, we are going to have ourselves a couple of ground attack planes. Indeed, we have Fockables making gun runs on the same country to the north. Which I think is a great call under the circumstances. You don't have the infantry early on as Panzer Lair. you got to go and invest as much as you can mm -hmm. in suppression material. Yeah, yeah. Just try to get that advantage. The Panzer IV is coming in to support the Panther. 76 mil gun is getting shot onto it, but not getting any killing blows, unfortunately, for the 76. Well, uh, the P2, P4s, I'm surprised the P4s are not engaging at this point either. I guess there's a little bit of wonky sight lines with that uh, small compound right there. Yeah, I think, yeah, now he's finally getting him into position to support once again, like you said, Khan. This would be a perfect use of artillery to knock out our AT gun for the Panther. Yeah. Instead of just slowly pinging it one by one with every 75mm shell. And running the risk of it taking you back out. Exactly. But he does get the kill, and that's going to remove the AT threat up north. Just just for now, it's still 57 mil gun, yeah, but he's not in the best position either. Well, looks like he's about to be. Very tight sight line there. <laughs> wow, he saw exactly oh. 100 meters square, and he put it around right in the middle of it. Yeah, real, real good gunnery uh, from the AT gun. Now, actually, I do like this. We see the P-47s are trying to make some gun runs to the south. Unfortunately for them, there's a Gephardt right there, and maybe we'll see a kill? It's unlikely, but uh, he's already trailing some smoke. Yeah, 20mm guns are definitely always underrated as anti-aircraft guns, but they can be really deadly, as you can see. Especially in 1v1s, they're much cheaper than getting 37 40 mils, for example. And most of the time in 1v1s, you, you don't need to really kill a plane, you just need time to piss off. Exactly. Exactly. And nothing says piss off like a 20mm rapid fire cannon. Yeah. Or four of them strapped together. True. Very, very true. But the Gepard, the Gepard's like the one flak 36, yeah? Yeah, it's just, it's just one gun and yeah. One gun anti aircraft machine. A Von Gepard, Gewehr pony, yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm sure there's a German phrase in there somewhere, but forget it. Uh, you can always make one up. Oh, I thought about it, but as this much like work in the moment. Um, recon plane doesn't even get to the front lines, one burst of fire, and of course he immediately goes out. Yeah. But, um, Special Raita, he's, he's taking the trees, and he's starting to reduce anything in the center part of the map. I'm surprised there's been no real reinforcement there. Yeah, he is starting to gain momentum back. Just for his middle assault, and it's working well for Elfram. I mean, once again, his infantry do fare much better in the forest compared to Panther Grenadiers. But, uh, yeah, her robot's just more focused on getting tanks at the moment, getting out a Tiger and a Panzer IV. Uh, La Tigre. Where is La Tigre? In oh, the middle. Dogs on up to the battlefield. 
Indeed. Indeed. Um, now, I see an M, you know, M1919 over here engage and take out an IG-18. And it reminded us, we recently saw this discussion on a forum someplace that was talking about why didn't the Germans use some something, some sort of machine gun that was coeval to the you know, M1919 or the Modus. And one of the responses that struck me as funny was like, why use that when you had the 20 millimeter in the first place? Like, looking at the German material, if we're going to go big, you might as well go big. I'm not going to use mm -hmm. a machine gun that's going to take an extra, you know, level of recovery of manufacture. Just didn't make a whole lot of sense. I was really curious about that, though. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. But, um, along with other meaningless discussions that have absolutely no point whatsoever, we are going to see a third recon plane coming out to the map. Very brave, very noble, and soon to be very dead, I'm sure. Well, was, yeah, for sure. I mean, the other two have kind of gone down in bursts of flames. So unless three times a charm, his paper is not going to be flying much longer. Probably not. In fact, I think he's probably fighting for the wrong side. Wasn't Piper commanding the German tanks? <laughs> he's fleeing in the air now. <laughs> Is this going to be taken out by ground? Yes, it should be probably taken out by ground fire here. Yeah. Yep. yep. This one funny mail will we need. Yep, yep, yep. Meanwhile, in the center, um, M4A1 trying to engage some of this infantry, and unfortunately for him, he's looking the wrong direction. Yeah, and he is very dead now. Not sort of dead, not mostly dead. Very, dead. very dead. Armored Rifles are making a push on the hill, clearing out the Pack 40, and if they move up closer, they could zook the Tiger. That would just be just heartbreaking. Never mind. Problem solved. <laughs> Not perfectly, mind you, but still problem solved. Mm -hmm. At least he knows it's yes, but he's still moving up the Tiger, which is still a risky move without infantry support. He really, really shouldn't oh, be doing that. What is war without a little bit of risk? Yeah. But we have been deep into phase B right now, and actually I'd like we see the, the 259s uh, with those recon auto cannons. Those guys mm -hmm. are just so freaking powerful, and they're just so cheap too. Yeah, it's just never go wrong with auto cannon units. And finally, her robot getting our mortal heart track up north. That's definitely going to help out mm -hmm. here. But yeah, it's 13, 11, her robot still has the lead. Spanisher is starting to show, you know, signs of coming back, but. Yeah, I, f I think her robot set up a pretty good defense now to stop his middle, so I don't, I don't think Spanish is going to be making much more progress here. Nope, I don't believe so either. And honestly, I'm surprised that Herr Robert has allowed these Northern Americans to stay there as long as they have. Oh yeah, like that one guy in the forest? Yep. Now, oh. uh, Panther to the North does go down by a, a newly arrived 76 mil, which is just disheartening for the Germans. But uh, nice necessary kill over here from the Spanish knight himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good AT gun placement for sure. Yeah, it's Man. mainly he hasn't really been using that many tanks, honestly. Spanish, it's mainly a lot of infantry. Play hey, and the tanks have really just been regular M4s, no jumbos, no 76 mils. So maybe that's more of a uh, C phase thing he's going for. Well, if that's the case, at that point, we're just going to see tank spam. And we can definitely see already a couple of Shermans kind of sitting off the front lines, just kind of hanging out, doing their thing. But um, how do you see this developing in Phase C, then? Uh, let's say let's say each player continues to play what they have been in the first place. So let's say Spanish or it doesn't go and bring in imp artillery. What goes on? Uh, I, um, I think just as long as Sir Robert can just set to keep the defensive line up, he should be able to run. If may he probably want to maybe try to get a plus two to run a little bit faster, but it really depends how Spanish has his uh, C phase set up. I mean, obviously he's playing balance, so he should have a lot of C phase cards. So maybe he can just Sherman spam, infantry spam, get some artillery, half tracks of his own to push to victory. You know the armored rifle that before could have gone and taken out that pack forty, coming off of the whole <laughs> uh, embarrassing engagement. Yep. Takes out the IG-18. <laughs> and there he's sneaking around. And look, the fucker also to trying to, like, blind strafe him, but they have no idea where he is. 
we are going to see that double half track in the center and along with this this p4 is going to be able to engage i think both the lmg rifles and the sherman when he comes through the gap yeah that's Oof. brutal that's a good hit sherman's going to get return fire and not not as good of a hit but Damn. somehow that sight damage basically said oh i'm blind well apparently you're deaf and dumb too sir so yeah, the Panzer IV really rift that second shot, but the third one comes in clean. Outside of that, uh, armored rifles do get picked off. I could not tell you from what another mortar half track comes on in from the Germans. And I cannot wait until Schumann Wagens come back into this game. <laughs> yeah, this is a good map crowd. for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amphibious landings, my friend. Yep, yep. But yeah, her robot's actually taking the offensive, getting the momentum right now and this is exactly what he needs to do just try to push a little bit further capture another flag get the plus two advantage and try to steal the victory well he's a good chunk of the way there already uh, but we can see actually a couple of 76 mils being brought in just south of that central bridge you can see the southwest of all those lmgs mm -hmm. um which would cause quite an issue if he gets to an actual decent spot where he is right now not the highest value yeah yeah, this is yes, this is good momentum from Robert in general. And the main thing that Robert has done is a lot of his heavy armor is still alive. Like the Southern Panthers are all good. The Tiger's still alive. He's got another p Tiger being brought in. Up north, he has not as much heavy armor anymore, but a bunch of Panzer Fours, which is very important with you know Vanguard, Maverick income, like Panzer or tank division in general. Is try to keep your tanks alive because going to be harder to replace him later on. Yes, indeed. Now, that central town also looks like it's going to get, you know, wailed on quite a bit as infantry starts to get yeeted by that APHE. And again, we can go and say that there's a, things are completely worthless as an anti-tank weapon, but against anti-infantry, oh my god. Yeah. Ooh, but a B-26 come back the other direction has something to say about it. I think we're probably going to see two dead vehicles. That's a lot of bombs. Out, oh wow, nothing. Nothing, but everything is completely suppressed and the B-26 is going to escape, I believe. There's a rather sturdy aircraft. He's it's a little gonna... hot under the collar though, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Mm -hmm. But he's going to slow down that push show and give Spanners some time. To hopefully get some more reinforcements into the middle. That's exactly where he's doing, getting them for Command Sherman. Now we do have a couple at M4A3 looking south from the northern side there. Trying to engage that Tiger, and I think we know how well this is going to go for him. Oh, not real at all. Probably not. Yeah, I, I have a feeling this... Yeah, Spanner... Oh no, never mind. He's got a 76 mil Sherman. Because he really does need those 76 mil damage at the moment to try and knock out some of her Robert's heavy armor. Well, he's bringing P-47s to strafe pack 40s, which I kind of get, but... Bro, you know there's a ton of anti-air there. Yep, and also Fokkerwolves, which like to make an introduction. Yep, and they're going to definitely tell them to fuck off. Mm -hmm. That's one. One. Is it going to get the second? Ground fire might. Holy heck. Oh. Yeah, you got the uh, the flag villains. Now uh, M43 goes down. CGMC does keep the fuckables at bay. Mm -hmm. But now knowing that that's there, I think it, as it was, there was a pack. I think that was engaging it. And yep, I think you can still see him. Maybe. No, it's not the oh. uh, and machine gun. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, I I think at this point her robot just has a critical mass of tanks. Like, this is so much armor that Spanish is going to have to kill. And it's going to be very tough for him. Very true. Um, what's more, also the uh, LMG rifles coming on in as a um, couple in the center, in that center town. Uh, I rank these guys just a little bit above by air such trooping, so... I mean, uh, I, LMG I, I, I'm, being, I'm being very unfair, <laughs> that's not fair. But I guess I feel like infantry has to have an anti-tank component to be an effective unit, especially in SD2. You clearly disagree with me, but let me explain this reasoning. Okay. At this point, considering a lot of the um, much more close quarters that you have and the kind of cost efficiency really that you have out of tanks, losing a singular tank is 
it's it's hard, but it's not quite as devastating as it used to be. That's true. I feel like you need to have that increased utility among everything. So yes, STG's awesome. Um, you know, PPSHs with Molotovs, sure, go for it. But I feel like you need to have that extra punch consistently. Yeah, I, I feel like infantry can be split in two categories in SD2. They either mm -hmm. kill infantry, or like you use them to like kill infantry, but also kill tanks. Okay. Yeah, you go for the whole Gork and Mork approach, which kind of makes sense given your recent uh, hobby activities. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. I get that. I guess for me, I wish I to make units and you know, builds very all around. Which I guess does kind of lend itself to a kind of a negative. Ooh, 76 mil is going to start to engage these Tigers. Driver knocked out. The Tigers on a very risky position right on the road, gen, so close together. AT guns can have a fun time, but it's only one seventy six mil, so it's not too bad. What is bad though is that the drums are not engaging him. Oh. You get that mortar online. Also, also Spanish has not used any in artillery so far, and I think it's a real detriment to his cause. Nobody has used though. Recon planes. He has. And I do like seeing recon planes out, but they just I mean they're very cheap. They keep dying, but at the same time they're like rock. <laughs> 10 points, 10 or 15, yeah. and you get like quite a few of them per card, so it's not too bad. But still, it doesn't really feel like they've had that yeah, much impact. They'd have more impact if there's artillery to help out. True. But, uh, no. but yeah, it's a, it's a great push from her Robert in the middle here. Just He's throwing everything in the kitchen sink to try to capture this uh, town on the river. Well, it's good property values. I get it. It is. I don't, I don't think... I think the property value is going to go down after... All the, you know, destruction has no, occurred. No, no, no. That, that's called terrace gardening. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a weird thing. Mm -hmm. Architecture is so bizarre. Yeah. But the the recon plane survives! <laughs> Courtesy of the CGMC. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for much longer. It's a flag fell in, has a 20mm of its name on it. Well, if that one doesn't, then there's no one to the south. Oh, Gepard to the south. Yep, elevator ripped off. Another B-26. Looks like he's going to go and probably pressure this infantry assault. You know, I feel like they toned back the, the, the B-26 quite a bit in terms of Killy. Yeah, Goodness. yeah, one's only the, um, like, the small bomb, like, carpet bomber on. I believe it's a bigger bomber, a bigger bomber version and carries larger bombs instead. But yeah, it's only dropping like 45 kilogram bombs or something, if I recall. Yeah, but 20 of them at the same time. I just feel like there should be a lot more devastation from it. Now, down to the south, it's worth noting there was this engineer push that came in and would have been really great had it come, you know, 15 or 20 minutes earlier. Um, and I guess the thing that's starting to hit me right now, we haven't really seen that much veterancy really from either side. No, I, that's just kind of like a thing of SD2, honestly. It's not really worthwhile most of the time. To really take veteran machine in a lot of your units. It's just the quantity is really the quality in SD2. Fair enough. But you know what? It looks so pretty. And you don't you want to have some stuff like that helping you out every now and again. Yeah. I, that's the one thing I don't like about SD2 over SD44. In SD44, it was like... You could argue that veteran machine is a little bit too overpowered. <coughs> Desert Ratch. <laughs> but it, it actually kind of made it was a bit more of a like decision in deck building to choose whether yeah. you wanted vetted units or not. Where in ST two, ninety percent of the time, I just take unvetted units, especially infantry, because they're just gonna die regardless. I just need I just need spam. You know, and I imagine if they were living, breathing people, we'd care a little bit more about that. But you're right. Under the yeah. circumstances, when all you kill are sprites, does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. I say that, my computer's now heard me, so I, I guarantee you there'll be a BSOD at some point in the near future. <laughs> Sky, Skynet ruin MBS. Exactly. Exactly. P-51 takes vengeance Whoa. on the Gepper to the south. Jesus Christ, P-51. This it, it isn't his, uh, you know, really <laughs> strafing days, but uh, does well, he does pay the iron price. He does, but let's also talk about the fact that there's actually this half-track behind enemy lines right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a drive back to America at this rate. Yeah, from the Eastern Front. Yeah. 
<laughs> but the central town is in German hands, and um, despite the best efforts of this command M4A1, which I think has been there pretty much since the beginning of this match. Now, what isn't in their hands, though, is we have this small push happening, and M4A176, the M4A1's sidling east to west over here as well. Mm hmm. Oof. Until, yeah, until recently. His southern push is a very good idea from the Spanish, so it's gaining them some ground. He's managed to knock out those Panthers out right there initially, and her robot had to get some armor to respond. I don't think it's going to complete their work here, as you've got the Panzer IV. Kind of like up north, shooting down, and we've got two tig uh, tiger and a panther here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. Like like I said before, I think her Robert really just managed to amass that critical mass of tanks, and Spanner so just can't deal with it. Well, and without using a ton of his, losing a ton of his infantry either, we've always talked about the fact that Panzer Lair is not the most gifted when it comes to those ground forces. Certainly Indeed. not the numbers. Indeed, you really have to try to. You really have to make your Panzer Grenadiers count. As you can see, I'm fairly so certain her robot has only taken Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah, yeah, it's no pioneers or anything. Just, just no full on PZ grand spam because that's what you can really afford in terms of availability. True, true. Now there was a brief time that we had these Shermans kind of engaging to the north and actually getting some good pressure. Unfortunately, they're still not able to kill the Tigers. Nope. That's kind, that's kind of a problem with 75 mil Shermans in this game. In SC-44, you would definitely have a very good chance of killing Tigers with 75 mils. SC-2, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's too hard to get close enough. Heck, even close enough, your gun just does not have penetration. Well, that was the other thing, armor. The, the armor pen values are a little bit yes. more sensical than 44. Yes. Like, uh, for example, the uh, the Tiger and SC-44 had Trove Armor value, and the Sherman had 11 AP, so if you got in like, close by an extra 200 meters, you'd have like a chance to penetrate. I'm amused by the fact that it's been these B-26s, which had this air artillery been you know used a little bit earlier, that might have been a greater contributor, I would say, to the match. Unfortunately, yep. I don't think he called them in early enough. I'm also sad we haven't seen any jumbos. This yeah. is so cool. Yeah, that's true. Actually, pretty useful because they li they literally just tank a bunch of shots and draw fire away from your 76 mils. That kind of makes sense. I mean, they're big. They're in danger. They don't. There's not many of them you see in the wild. I get mm -hmm. it. It's just they they have their own oomph. You know. Yeah. They only made like 254 of them, but I do want to see a few. I think it's a number. Something around that. I'll take your word for it. Uh, what we have seen, though, is seeing a lot of M4 Shermans really not be able to stand up to the, their German counterparts. I'm oh. surprised, actually, that we've seen as many P4 survive as we have. Same here. Same here. I think, yeah, Her Robert's been using them pretty defensively for the most part. He's really been leading all of his soldiers with their heavier catch. But, yeah. It's, it's pretty much going to be a her robot victory. Spanner so really does not have the oomph to push back at this rate. Hope he moves to watch this 37 mil uh, from the CGMC. Oh, jeez. The half track? Oh my god, really? He hates he shells. Yeah, but he's cheating. He's got two M4A1s behind. I know. Wow. There's some really nifty sight lines on this map. I always kind of fail to appreciate it. Oh, yeah, it is. That is, like, bizarre. Looking at the tiger and panther in the middle. And the CGMC goes down to a mortar. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, let's just stop by the fact that the anti-air cover here has been phenomenal from Herr Robert. Yeah, he's, he hasn't been messing around. And he's managed to keep his Fokker Wolves alive. Yeah, it's just, just good anti-air play. Now, if this is the Battle of the Bulge, the Americans would have pulled off the feet of sneaking German-speaking Americans behind enemy lines. <laughs> Regrettably, we are not living in that mirror universe. Um, and looks like, like you said, Rang, that this will come down to a Panzer Lair victory. 
technology prevails in the end, I guess. That's weird, and... because you used to say that basically the German stuff was over-engineered, over-machined, <laughs> and overdone. When you get enough of him. True. With all the armor. And by God, look at that KD. Yeah, it's a 2000 KD difference. Well, Jesus. Uh, one of the Flacco Wolves, uh, he actually is a Mastodon, so I think this is his proper scientific name. Um, he's an instant <laughs> ace. Yeah. 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 A little, a little bit cheating there, shooting down recon planes, but we'll give it to him. Okay, fine. How about Jonas down there? Uh, Flak Veerling. He's got one recon kill, but then three legit kills. Jo oh, yeah. He's like a ground ace. We all know it's a ground ace. That's even a thing. Probably not. It is. It is. Ground, is it? ground ace is a thing. Okay. Um, a tiger is three fifths of the way there. Frankel. I mean, yeah. I mean, we we we've talked about it pretty much to death. Might have been a better idea to bring in some earlier armor, earlier stronger armor, and some artillery. Yeah, artillery and heavy AT. That's really what Spanish uh, needed. That's what the doctor orders. Yeah, but you gotta make sure you take that script to the right pharmacy, and unfortunately it didn't seem like it happened today. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Spanish, we always love seeing you play, and thank you for actually bringing forth that third armored. It's great to see some of the old holdouts come back again to the other side of the of the, the war. Yeah. Um, and congratulations to Herr Roberts. So, um, I think we bring another Brawl Over Breast game on Thursday, don't we? Yes, we will. So folks, come and check back in with that one. Um, until then, Greg, do you have any more Pearls of Wisdom? We haven't made a breast joke this entire time. Um, I've been trying to keep them covered, you know. <laughs> oh. Don't worry, guys, I'll make up for that Thursday. Uh, until then, though, I'm Conor Ulrich. I'm Ryan Rue. Take it easy.